This topic is called graphs. This topic is called graphs, which is um, kind of our way of saying, hey, you've learned about all these different kinds of equations in the past, but we're not just interested in moving symbols around. We also want to draw pictures of them because those pictures are often very, very helpful for us to understand what's going on. Here are some of the ones we've been covering recently. And you can see I've arranged them in a particular way, sort of two by two. That's on purpose. I wonder if you can work out as we go through why I've arranged it in this particular way. Let's do some very rough sketches of these. Like I said, they don't have to be very large. Y equals X. How would you describe, use words, how would you describe that graph? Agni. Just give us one quality and someone else can take over. One thing that you know about it. Okay, it starts at zero. I'm going to be a little finer than that. It starts at zero, 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 at the origin. Very good. Uh, though it's a bit funny, I mean, I see what you meant by the word start, but I'll come back to that in a second because there are reasons why we'd say, hmm, is start the best word to choose? Um, so, but it does go through there. Anyone else want to give me something else? Just one little fact. Yeah, Brian. It's a straight line. It's a straight line, which is very important because none of the rest of these are straight lines. Um, is it going, which way is it going? Is it going from um, the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom? Which way? Bottom to the top. Bottom left to top right. So we, we can draw this, right? There you go. There's y equals x. Bless you. Now, uh, Agni said before, and I think we all knew what he meant. He said that it starts at the origin. But do you see why I put a teeny tiny question mark over that? Because where does this line start? Where does it begin? Yeah, kind of nowhere because it just goes on forever. You can't point to some spot and say, oh, look, there's the beginning because you can always point to a spot before it. That's y equals x. Let's move to the right. y equals x squared. This shape is so important it gets its own name. Does anyone remember what the name is? Parabola. It's a parabola. Very good. And we can draw this thing. Jake. Jake, you can redeem yourself by telling us. Uh, one thing about this parabola shape, can you give us a description of a, a feature or something about it that you know? It's curved. Yep. It has a, uh, okay, interesting. So you've, you've gone for two, one and a half. The y equals x squared uh, graph is curved. Uh, you said maximum. The, this one here, the y equals x squared graph, it has a, a minimum, not a maximum. So down here, at the origin, right? you can see that's the lowest it possibly goes. It doesn't go any lower than that, so we would call it the minimum. If it was an upside down parabola, it would have a maximum, because there's a spot where there's the top, and you can't go any further. Um, that spot, by the way, again, has a special name. That one right there starts with a V. It's the vertex, very good. OK. So before we move on, this is a straight line, so we call it linear. This guy you guys told me was called a parabola. So these are the special names that we've got here. Um, by the way, I don't know if you saw, as I drew this, um, just personally, I am not very good at actually drawing these curves nice and perfectly. So I generally, when I'm using paper, I use pencil. Um, I would encourage you guys to use pencil as well because it's pretty hard to get it right first time. And if you make a, an error, you can rub it out very easily. But secondly, because this graph is, do you remember it had a, um, a symmetry to it? Do you remember what kind of symmetry does that graph have? Hmm. From the right hand side, this guy over here, I can flip it over to get the left hand side. I can reflect it. Okay? So we'll call it reflection of symmetry. Okay? So what I do is I draw one side. I, I don't know if you saw me actually do that. I started here and then I drew the right hand side. And then to draw the other part, I start from here and I do it again. I find it quite hard to go all the way through, so that might be a little tip for you. In fact, watch, year 10. We're going to do something very similar for this guy down here. Not a straight line, not a parabola. This is x cubed, so we call it the cubic curve, right? Watch again carefully. Don't draw anything, just look, okay? This graph also has symmetry. I'll come back to the kind in a second. But because it has symmetry, I'm going to start here at the origin, right? Thanks. And then I'm going to draw the shape that I get on the right-hand side. Once I've done that, because I know I want that same shape over in the bottom left, I start from the origin again, and I do the shape. It's much easier than trying to do it right from the left and all the way through and get the shape 
nice. If you're very good at that, then fantastic, go for it. But I find it practically a bit easier to do it this way. So this is the cubic curve here. Okay. Lastly, uh, most recently we looked at this guy, the x to the 4 graph. Because it's a 4, we call it the quartic. Uh, what's it look like? How would you describe it? All right. It's like a flatter parabola. It's like a flatter parabola. I think that's perfect. Okay, so it has all the same kind of, it's up, it's curved, all that kind of thing. It's symmetrical, reflectionally, except it's got a flatter bottom. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, so this is the quartic curve, Q-U-A-R-T-I-C. And it looks like a parabola that's just put on a bit too much weight. Okay. Now, just lastly, before we move off these and have a look at today's graph, um, there's some important information I haven't put on here. I I'm not worrying about it now. I just want to get the idea of the pictures. What kinds of information would be important to add on to these graphs if the question were um, graph y equals x cubed? You'd have to do more than this. What else would you have to provide? Any suggestions? What might be some important features that are worth labeling on there? There are going to be some units that are important. Now, I'm going to be a bit more specific. Which units? Because I'm not just going to put 0, 1 to 10, 0, etc. That kind of detail is not important. It just takes you forever. What specific units might be helpful? As well as vertexes and also maybe the, like the curve line. Yeah, OK, all right. So we'll come to some more specific details here. I'll, I'll get to you in a second, Agni. This guy here doesn't have a vertex. Doesn't have like this guy does, right? You see, it's not like a, a place where it turns around. But that point is important because it starts with an I. What is that spot? It's a ooh. See how <laughs> the origin? Yeah, I deserve that. It's an intercept. Thank you, Agni. So that's an intercept. That's always important. All of these guys, interestingly, have an x and y intercept of zero because they all pass through the origin. But often your graphs won't. They'll be moved up and down, they'll be moved left and right, and so you'll get intercepts in different spots. Those are important. Okay. One other thing that's important, and I didn't mention it too much before, which is why I'm mentioning it now. Just put your pants down and look at this parabola for a second with me. Just have a look at it. I started off by saying it's y equals x squared. Let's draw it and let's have a look at the shape. And we're reasonably familiar with this now. However, if you did not know that it was y equals x squared, you just looked at it like that, right? At the moment, I actually don't know what graph it is. It could be y equals x squared, at least I hope it was, because that's what I intended, but it might not be. There are other graphs that it could be, and they look exactly the same. For instance, just this one example, there's an infinite number. This guy, oh, gets it in one shot. He said it as I was writing it. Um, this guy here, still got an x squared in it. It's still going to be a parabola. It's still going to pass through the origin. It looks identical, even though it's different to what I originally intended. So I need some way to distinguish between x squared and 2x squared, or 3x squared, or whatever x squared. Okay? So I want you to jot this on the side in another color if you've got it. I'm going to use, I'll use green. Okay? In addition to your intercepts, what you need is what we call a point for scale. I'll write that down because it's so important. It's a point for scale. Let me explain what that means. Uh, it's a point because as you can see, uh, I find the coordinates of a point that are on the graph. In this case, 1, 1 is a point on the graph. I could have picked a whole bunch of others, but 1, 1 is just easy. So I might as well choose an easy number. Okay? What it is, it's not just any point though. It's a point that helps me understand the scale of this thing. Is it, is it big? Is it small? Um, I said y equals 2x squared. y equals like 1 over 100x squared would also look the same. It would just have a different point for scale because it would be um, really, really flat, like super, super flat. Okay? So therefore, you can pick any point you like. You can pick something like, I, I don't know, how about this guy? What would this be? If you put in x equals negative 2, on the original graph that I wanted, what y coordinate would go with that? Negative 2 squared is 4. And you can sort of see, I've drawn my scale reasonably so you can see what's going on. Um, you could put that one instead of this one. That would be fine. That's still a point that tells you the scale. Okay? So it's a bit weird. People are like, but where do, where do I put the point for scale? And the answer is you put it anywhere, so long as it helps you understand the scale. Okay? Right. 
So, last final note before we look at our new thing. Uh, these kinds of graphs, they have what kind of symmetry again? These two? Reflectional, and that's why I put them in this column together. These two do not, they have a different kind of symmetry. What kind? Yeah, rotational. Keep that in the back of your mind, rule this off, and we're going to draw a new set of axes.